Good morning, everybody. Um, this is a, a bit of a special Uncensored Radio. Uh, we're talking about the sex work industry and we're just having like a frank discussion um, with a lot of different viewpoints that are going to just come into this. I want to sit back a little bit and just let the guests have the discussion amongst themselves because I don't work in the sex industry uh, and I just want to get <laughs> like how people feel. <laughs> don't you even start me, <laughs> but Jeffrey. Um, all righty. So obviously we've got uh, Jenny here, Jenny Ketchum. So Jenny, I know that Jenny was a, uh, she's been a previous guest here on Uncensored Radio. Do you remember that, Jenny, when Jake interviewed you, Jake Pentland? Uh, Years a long, ago. Long, long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And it, that's how I came to know who you were because obviously I didn't have anything to do with your previous career. Yeah. I just read the book and I loved your book, I Am Jenny. It yeah. was one of those books where I was reading it and I sat there. There was moments when it sort of made me really look at myself and I'm like, wow, like, I've got issues too, like not in a bad way, but just, you know, when you, you just develop that insight because you obviously had a lot of insight. And I think that's why when you went on uh, celebrity rehab with Dr. Drew, you were able, you talked to it straight away because you went there with the intention of just promoting your career, didn't you, at, at first? Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, yeah, the intention was not to like get help or even get sober or any of that it was because I think uh at the time the idea of being a sex addict as a porn star was like cute and funny and sort of um I, I didn't really have like a, a like a tactile sense of like what it meant to like be behaviorally addicted to something and it's like oh this will be like of course I'm a fucking porn star who's addicted to sex like <laughs> it's workaholism right <laughs> and I remember like I remember when you showed up on the show and it was like it was almost cute like you had your little green scarf on and like you come in I think you were probably drunk as well or whatever and you were like just walking in and you were just like so blasé and it wasn't until like a couple of days in that sort of the reality was hitting you and you know the moment that broke my heart Jenny and it's like like same as reading your book it's like you have such deep insight. It was when you were crying about feeling like a monster because of, you know, just the things that have transpired in your life and like in your behavior when you were younger. And that was awful to watch. Like it, it sort of broke me a bit. I was like, that's when I was interested in you. And then when you were interviewed on Jake's show, like I bought your book straight away because I really wanted just to know. And I just found it so amazing. Like you were somebody who really gets who you are. And I think a lot of us struggle with that. And we sort of run from ourselves a bit. And, you know, we attach ourselves to different things because we just don't want to face the, what is it? Like the just, we don't want to face like, the tough stuff in our lives. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I, I know for me, there there was a lot of really uncomfortable stuff that I was avoiding and that I had been avoiding for a long time, like whether they were experiences that were like outside of me or just like emotional experiences that happened inside of me. I, I spent a lot of time trying to just like numb everything from here down and, um, yeah, I think with with getting into rehab and them not having a bar, like I, it really just didn't occur to me that I wouldn't be able to drink or smoke weed in sex rehab. Like it was not, like that didn't fucking occur to me. Um, and then getting in there and then not being able to do those things. It took a couple of days for the sort of like effect of all of the substances that I used to wear off and for like the emotional experience of this being human to turn back on. and. Um, yeah, I think even in in the things that we often think about ourselves, there's a lot of storytelling that we do to avoid something else. And I think even this idea that I was a monster was like, yeah, th there's something like really sticky in that story. And if I could like hold on to being a monster, then I wouldn't have to like experience some other thing. 
which is just like me being human and like having pain. So I, there was there was so much learning and like beauty that came from that whole experience. And it means a lot to me that, that you read the book and that it meant something to you too. Yeah, no, and thank you so much. And thanks for being here because we wanted to just to bring different perspectives. Like you're someone who's exited the sex industry. Yes. Like Bonnie, somebody who's working currently in it, she's been working in it for 20 years. Yeah. Um, as a <laughs> nearly, stripper. Nearly. And a prof <laughs> nearly. Sorry, Bonnie, nearly 20 years. <laughs> not, not, not quite as old as that. <laughs> but, but Bonnie has made like a living from, from dancing mm -hmm. and she, He's done it for 20 years, which I sort of think is admirable in a way because, you know, a lot of girls sort of, you know, it's a short-term thing. They do that, then they go to other things and, and whatever. And Bonnie has been very consistent and she lives in a regional area because I've just moved back to our regional area in Australia. Um, and she sort of made a career out of it because Bonnie's never shied away from putting her face to it. She's mm -hmm. never... You know, a lot of girls are in the in, in the industry where they don't want to be known and they'll just do it for a while and whatever. Uh, Bonnie's always been very just proactive about it and very, I guess you're quite candid, Bonnie, because you just say that, like, you know, this is what you do and it's whatever. It's like the same as just working at the post office, you know. It's just your career. It's funny you say the post office. My grandfather is actually was the postmaster of a post office for many years. <laughs> um, and um, all my family know about my work and well when you like because you know we went to school here you can't walk into a strip club and go hi nice to meet you I'm Cassie and people are like we went to school together your name's Bonnie like it doesn't work like that <laughs> people know who you are it's a small town there's no point trying to hide who you are if you want to work like especially when you grew up here like and plus for me a lot of people are just like wow you don't hide who you are that's really awesome I'm like well I like who I am and I like my job. So, but there are women who have different views, and that's fine, whatever suits you. Um, but yeah, definitely, I've made a living from this for the fact that people know who I am and know that I'm the outback stripper, the sexiest bogan you'll ever meet. Like that's that's I'm happy to be that, and I love my life. So, and I like working. The one and only Bonnie Tonic, sexiest bogan in Australia. So I live in central Queensland, Australia. I'm well known as the Outback Stripper. I love getting naked at parties in the middle of the bush. Normally I rock up naked and I often leave naked as well. Because of all this COVID stuff, this is now my office. Working from home 24 seven, living the exclusive life. Don't get me wrong, I'm devastated knocking back probably like a thousand dollars at least a week at the moment because people are still ringing for shows. She's so pretty. She's my whole world. I've been stripping for nearly 20 years and thankfully my boobs still look like they're about 18. I'm definitely very lucky. Do you ever feel, though, Bonnie, like, um, you know, especially living in a small town, and I've felt it too because, you know, I'm the other as well living here because I'm fabulously gay. Um, you know, and, like, when we when you walk into somewhere, you feel the eyes on you. Like, do you yeah, get that's that That's just because well? we come from a um, – our town's still country, man. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, we were looking at the bulls the other day. We're the beef capital of Australia. Like – People, girls from the Gold Coast and places like that, they think they'll come up here and they'll, you know, they'll book a job out of town and they'll make so much money, you know, working out west and everything. But they don't realise that 20 or 30 k's west is literally like the bush. I'm talking like I literally am in the bush out the back of my house right now. There's no houses. Like I can see bush for, you know, it's bush, like literally. Like people just think, oh, well, you know, it's a big town, Rocky. We've got 100,000 people here. But as soon as you just go away, it's bush, like literally the outback. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And there's just so many different things that make that 
in regards to the industry complicated but also makes it exciting and fun yeah i guess also what i wanted to ask as well um to both you ladies as well is how do you both feel about the sex industry just in general like how do you like how do you feel about it just not as well, a comfort like ha, obviously bonnie you're really you you like it because you're it's your thing like you're well it but what you got to also remember is that the sex industry is vast and complex when i no. say i work in the sex industry i don't I, I don't work as an escort so i'm not having sex for money um when i i, I could be doing proper pornos but i'm just too much of a control freak so um what i'm doing is um a premium snap and making my own online content and stuff like that yeah i, th I think I so think your point about like the the broadness of sex work is uh is, is is really insightful right like like what does it mean to even be a sex worker like there are so many different things under that umbrella and the spectrum goes from like exactly like people who are like in sex work sort of like involuntarily and that ranges all the way to like people who are like deeply empowered by the sex work that they do right and then so to say like how do you feel about sex work or how do you feel about like the sex industry like yeah that it, it's sort of it's just too big of a question to even like wrap my head around like like I'm yeah. a sex worker and I feel like it's a dirty word mm. almost. Well, it, 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 I think it's changing. Adult, if you say adult entertainment industry, yeah. like oh. to me, like, okay, I get it. Um, we were talking like earlier today, like if you follow the show we do, my uncle, um, he, he's a crazy old man, you know, he, he died and he it came to me a couple of years ago because he assumed because of me being the gay one that I was kind of filthy and crazy that he wanted to leave his porn stash <laughs> to me. And he had like all these, he, so in the like late eighties, nineties, when kind of porn was big on VHS would go and be the bodyguards when the porn stars would come into town. Yeah. So he would get their like panties, and like have Polaroids with them and like have their pubes taped to the back of the picture, have their high heel. Ew, yeah, that's a and bit like, full on. Different yeah, strokes like, for different strokes. Right, right, that's <sighs> crazy though. But so he's coming to me like a year and a half goes, this old Italian male being like, yo, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, listen, I got all this stuff, you know, when I die, you gotta keep it. So we're going through his apartment, finding this stuff, and I'm like, what am I gonna do that? Like, who wants to <laughs> Sell it on the internet. Stuff? Yeah, but to him, no, there's a like market it was, for it, Jeff. I don't yeah. care. It's got to. No, we threw it out. It's got to go though. But to him, it was this huge treasure. Yeah. But I'm like, it just to me, it was like such a significant change, and even what the industry has gone through, just from like the '90s of when people would line up to go to an adult store to get a VHS sign to get a poster, to what it is now. Yeah. You know, like I, I don't think it's. Is you know my mother was like Playboy degrades women. They know what they're signing up for, Mom. Like you're just mad because you don't have the body. I mean, <laughs> you know because there's and now that she's older, that my whole life that's what I always heard my mother would say. Now that she's older, she goes, you know, if I was younger, I would do it. Yeah, she feels she felt completely different later. Funny thing is, is what I would like to know from Jenny, if she doesn't mind me asking, is you know when she was working in the sex industry, um, were there? Where did you learn how to do it? Because for me, when I started stripping um, here, we didn't even have a strip club and we didn't have the internet. So do you know what I mean? Like I just had to like teach myself everything and. Um, like you'd get a few random girls coming up from Brisbane, different places to do bikey club shows. And then I would learn things again from that. But it's not like these days you can just Google it or like when people work in major cities like Brisbane or Sydney, you know, there's numerous strip clubs, numerous, you know, adult entertainment venues, brothels, things like that. Like we've never even had a brothel in Rocky. So mm -hmm. for me, it was just a totally different time to grow up. So mm -hmm. I, and there were no other girls working here. So that lived permanently in the industry. Like they just kept coming and going and um, yeah. So I don't know, like there was no one really to teach you. I had a friend buy my first dildo for me when I was 18 and my boyfriend was jealous and smashed it. 
So, I mean, where did Jenny learn? That's what I'd like to know. Like, I didn't have read your book yet. Luke's going to live, like, learn it to me. Yeah. Um, I, let's see. I was pretty promiscuous throughout middle school and high school. So I had uh, plenty of practice in the bedroom before I got <laughs> to the, the ripe old age of 18. And then, um, you know, when, when I got into the business, I started slow and I did like magazine layouts and they were, it was all like solo girl stuff. And I'd say, you know, I'm not going to do like girl, girl, or like, I'm not going to work with other people. And then as the sort of like effect of being on camera wore off that like intensity, I mean, same with going on stage, right? Like mm -hmm. yep. it's scary as fuck to go on stage. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't mind. <laughs> For sure. But I bet at first it was a little bit nerve wracking, right? And then over uh, a period of time. I was probably really drunk, but I don't okay. think it was. Yeah. Totally. So alcohol for sure helps mm -hmm. with, with the nerves in all cases, I've found until, I mean, mm -hmm. it's a fine line, right? But um, yeah, I think, I, think I, I, I worked up to it. I went to a lot of shoots. I watched a lot of other women. I didn't watch porn itself especially like the more I got into the business it, it seemed um it seemed invasive because like I, I knew everybody right and it was like I don't want to watch friends get fucked and like that right seems awkward um but it's different here for me because everyone knows us like I mm -hmm. do uh sex shows on like my snapchat and I post online with my boyfriend mm -hmm. like our friends and family everyone know like yeah. I've got I've got friends who are my friends that will, you know, have my premium snap. They still come around and have dinner with my boyfriend. I know it just people don't even blink an eyelid about it because it's not dirty to us. Yeah. But I just, uh, you know, like if I guess you're in America, like has mm -hmm. the, do you feel like it's different because of being in, in America? Maybe. I mean, like every, everybody in my, in my life knew too. I mean, except for the men that I was dating, right? Like they were usually the people that I wouldn't tell. Or <laughs> <laughs> be like, eh. But everybody else knew, right? Like the people who were important to me all knew. Um, and yeah, I mean, which I think really speaks volumes about where I was with like intimate relationships at that time with, with human beings. But um, there is, there is, uh, you know, some degree of like, um, stigma that goes with being a sex worker in the industry and I think mm. a lot of it also is mediated by how much you own it right like Bonnie it seems like you really like own your job you're not ashamed of it like it's just what you're doing there there isn't this like shroud of secrecy around it right and I think that like being able to show up for the job and for yourself and for the people in your life in that way that's like just honest and authentic and like genuine I think that's really makes a difference in terms of like the way that people view you because you show up and you're like this is fucking me like what you know? <laughs> well I think it's helped change the industry in Australia to be honest yeah, totally because back in the day we used to only get about $230 for a 30 minute triple x show and yeah. I just thought to myself I don't want to go to five different parties a night yeah for that amount of money you've got to you're wasting time talking to people changing the money then you've got to go to another job because you've booked straight right. after so then people want to talk to you and ask you questions and oh who are you where are you from what's your real name you know and yeah. I'm just thought well that's silly if there's 10 people at a party and they can't afford a hundred dollars each to watch me do you know yeah the full-on shows that I wanted to be doing then yeah. I you know I didn't really want to do it so now I've sort of revolution revolutionized the package so yeah. instead of charging two fifty, I want eight hundred, nine hundred, a thousand, fifteen hundred, even yeah. up to two grand for a package, yeah. and get to spend a whole day with people and just be honest and real all day and just have fun instead yeah. of just showing up and leaving and letting people talk about you after you leave and be like, oh wow, this and that. Instead of talking yeah. them talking about you, you're talking about yourself with them and sharing stories, and yeah. it's sort of like a whole different experience. Yeah, yeah, it, it sounds far more intimate than like the like, oh, show up, the strippers here for the show, and then you have yeah. the stage, and then they throw shit at you, and then you leave, right? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. then they go, oh, geez, you know that bitch was not very nice or whatever, you know, like yeah. people are so mean. Mm -hmm. Like if people are mean to me sometimes when I go to parties and I'm there. Yeah, like, they mean sure. to your face. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that is yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think something that I really so I did some featured dancing for a while in my career, and like it is you have to have such hustle and like such heart and such determination. And I just didn't after like being in porn for so many years, where you show up, you get your makeup done, you get fucked, and then you leave. It was like, <laughs> what do you mean? I have to like really, really work for this. <laughs> and mm. so I just like failed miserably as, as a dancer, like across the board. And it required a significant amount of alcohol for me to be like comfortable enough to get on stage. And by the time I had that much alcohol, the heels did not work out. And so, um, Oh yeah. Well, that's geez. the thing. It's not just the dancing though, is it? It's, it's like, you've got to really bring the charisma and engage the men that want to watch you as well and yeah. make them feel like, you are someone who they can approach and, you know, they want to spend money on you because you're somebody who they feel is, you know, just there and you're, you're likable, you're, you're watched, like they just want to be in there and that's, that's what's going to co get them to, co to like you and spend money on you. It's just like anything else, I guess. It's a hustle, isn't it? You really have to but pretend to fucking like people. Yeah. And that's yeah. hard to fucking do because I can't stand people just doing drag and then have to pretend to like people to get those stupid tips with the fuck mm -hmm. off. Yeah. But, uh, you, know, <laughs> you know what works for me? I feel the more you like yourself, the more mm -hmm. easy it, it is to do that engaging with people because I just love myself so much. And when I get off stage or finish the show, I just tell people, yeah, fuck, I love my life, love, love my boobs, love me, you know, longest legs, you know. I oh, love this, love this, I'll oh, check that, me out. That radiates from you. I think that's pretty, you know, you can tell, like, you are very, like, you look happy, you smile, like, you, you you know. You Thank you. You seem to enjoy your life, you know. Well, but we do you, have, like, uh, look, oh, oh, sorry, Jeff, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, like, I wanted to ask Jenny quickly, like, how do you feel about... Railroad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, how do you feel about Penny now, years later? Yeah, I mean, I if love you don't mind me bringing her up. No, not at all. I mean, like it is me, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I I love that part of my life, and I don't I don't necessarily like. I used to see her as a very different person than me, and I think I've done a lot of work around like. No, still me. I was doing different things then and um, going by a different name then and like struggled with uh, struggled with the identity. And ultimately, like that was a really special and amazing and exciting time in my life. And um, I I had a lot of fun and I slept with. all well, we weren't sleeping, but I fucked a lot of really. <laughs> Right, but like, it is. It is fun. I had a lot of fun. I had so much fun, and like I'm having fun now, and it's in a very different way, right? Um, but I love, I love her. She will be 26 forever. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever, do you ever miss the lifestyle at all of being a porn star? Because you know, Penny Flame, you were huge then. Like yeah. you were huge. Like you were winning awards. You were doing a lot of stuff because I like I only met you on Dr. Drew mm -hmm. and then I went and like I didn't I actually have never seen one of your um porn videos but no, I, I sort of looked you up a lot and I, like I saw you won like um I don't was it AVN yeah AVN was it, yeah yeah you like you won like a lot of, of of awards and I'm just wondering do you ever miss the kind of glamour of the lifestyle yeah I, I miss I miss the highs. I don't miss the lows. Um, I think, yeah, like, of course I miss being on stage and like being fawned over and like getting my makeup did and like the, like the pomp of it all, like so much fun. Um, and, and it's, it's such a part of my history and like having had those experiences now, like, and I know the come down the night after AVN, right? Like when you when yeah. you get off stage and like you go back to your room and like it's just you and like a bottle of vodka and like nobody in that entire arena knows that like you're hurting or that like 
yeah, just like the state that I was actually in, like the, the highs were amazing and the lows were like profoundly painful and like isolating. And I think I, I don't, I don't miss that degree of loneliness. Um, and I, and I wouldn't trade the highs. Um, like I, I, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't risk that degree of loneliness again, just for the high. We've actually been joined by Sandy as well. I saw Sandy was in the room just before. And I know that she's also, because you're a social worker now, aren't you, Jenny? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Sandy's a social worker as well. And um, Sandy sort of holds some views that she feels that sex work really is, you know, damaging to women mm -hmm. and that it leads to, like, I guess she will explain it better, but her, when she was speaking to me, she said, look, I think it's, you know, in our Western societies, like our first world societies, it can be an okay thing, but it's really just feeding into an industry where there are women in countries that aren't as privileged that it just isn't, they're forced into it and it's an expectation. Unfortunately, Sandy began to experience technical issues and was not able to participate in the interview with Bonnie and Jenny. However, at the end of taping, we were able to get this exchange between Bonnie and Sandy. So uh, that would be my first question. Um, have you experienced any harm or known risks? Um, some examples of this, um, particularly in the pornography industry, is um, unwanted pregnancies, STIs and STDs, um, prolapsed anus, um, I mean, not to mention the battery, um, the physical violence and the horrific scenes that are often depicted in pornography. Um, so I guess just risks and harms, if you wouldn't mind summarising some of those. The sex industry is vast and complex. I definitely don't think you can blanket shame or pigeonhole the whole industry. There are definitely risks and harms in the adult industry. For me personally, I've experienced a lot of different levels and types of sexual assault. The strange thing is, is that some people don't realise that it's not okay because they assume that because we are sex workers, that it's okay for them to treat us like that. I want to show people that you can enjoy adult entertainment while being respectful and being courteous and that it doesn't have to be something that is dirty and frowned upon because when you shame industries and things like that especially around sex that's when there are people who can miss out on being able to access the support services that they need to keep themselves safe. Ideas in radical feminism pose it that all of the sex industry or what more liberal people call sex work um, could be deemed as an institutionalised rape of women. Um, that's a macro big picture of the industry. And I, I would really like to know what you think about that and what your conceptualisation is of the sex industry. I've had worse incidences at home being raped by my boyfriend because he thinks I'm rooting guys at my parties when I'm just a triple X showgirl. I feel strong and confident when I work and I demand respect. I don't let people do things that I don't want them to do and I make sure I'm in control. I think that a lot of women do enjoy working in the sex industry. There are horrible things going on in the world and I think the only way we can start to fix that is to talk about it. We need to raise our men and our women to respect one another. I would really love to know outside of the sex industry who you are, what are your interests, what you're passionate about. Um, so if you could tell us a little bit about that and perhaps as a bit of an add-on, if you weren't part of, involved um, in the sex industry, what else may have you chosen with your career, perhaps Bonnie? Um, you know, is there an exit plan for you? Is there something afterwards that you're interested in? So, I'm, yeah, I'd really like to hear about your experiences, what other alternatives there may have or are. My life feels full and I think that people need to look at different ways of defining success. I love helping people. I love caring for people. Every day, my main focus is just being kind. I want to spread joy, spread happiness. 
I did well at school. I could have gone to uni if I wanted to. At this stage, I don't really think I need an exit plan. To be honest, I'd be happy working at Spotlight or the corner store if I got to be polite to people and make people smile and be proud to do my job well. If I had had a little bit more courage as a child, perhaps I could have done acting or musical theatre. I wanted to be a model, but I didn't really have the facial features for it, even though I was tall and skinny. But you just do the best you can and strive to do good. <laughs> but, okay, so so because kids are stammered in Yemen, what am I supposed to do? Not eat over here? No, it's not. It's not really about that, Jeff. You know, the funny thing was, is like I went to Thailand, and um, I'm lucky here. I have choice and I have options. So if I have a guy ring and they're having a party and they haven't booked, and it's a Saturday night and it's ten o'clock at night and I know they're drunk, if they don't have twelve hundred dollars for me to come down to the beach and do a show, I'm just like, look, man. You'll have to book ahead next time because I don't really want to go to a place where people are drunk and that um, that that's risky for me um, Even and if things they like that. Twelve hundred dollars? Are you really going to go at that late of notice to a beach with a bunch of drunk guys? Uh, yeah, for sure. What do you think? That's what you. That's what I do for a living. I go to places where people are drunk for lots of money, but, and I do shows. But the, but what I'm saying is that I have choices and I have options. Whereas like when, in Thailand, like when I went to see a um, like a triple X show on stage in a club, it was, it was, I cried because it, it felt to me like someone pushed my mother out onto stage to pop some penny turtles out. That's what it felt like. The, it felt like someone pushed this old woman on stage to do mm. this. And it was heartbreaking to me because it made me feel so proud to be in Australia and have choice and have options right. and every time I go to a job I'm always specific about people being polite and respectful to me right. like when people book shows I always tell them um, the more polite you guys are the better the show so do you know what I mean like as long as you guys have manners and if you want to touch my mm. boobs please may I yes you may right so I just want to champion big good manners everywhere I go in hope that that spreads that for other people as well well, it's very interesting to me because, you know, being a gay dude, I, I looked up a lot of uh, female stripper contracts for all the straight guys. And then I've looked up male stripper contracts for the lady friends. The male stripper contracts are more strict than the females. And it's like they don't, they don't. And I'm like, how, how does this work? How does that happen? Yeah, I mean, like, men are typically given a lot more, like, r rules that help them, like, protect themselves than are women, right? Like, like it's, it's the most insane thing to me. Like, they could knock somebody out. But the, the female who's in, it, it just, of course, like, I'm like, even them, as a stripper, they have more protection and, like, just straight up, like, from the jump are just like, fuck you. Yeah. And I'm like, a female is like, oh, well, I got to deal with the drunk guy possibly groping me. And I, I just got so possibly <laughs> it does I'm happen like, all the time. Ah! Yeah, it that's makes it. me insane. Yeah, it's it's it's, a, it's certainly not a like if it's a when, right? Yeah, like, it, yeah. It, exactly. Yeah, it I, just I, depends I, how you hold yourself and carry yourself at the job when those things happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you guys ever had like really bad experiences in like in work? Numerous. Like numerous. Keep on sharing. What would be your worst? Oh, one guy, if, I, if, I finished work and I was leaning over the bar in a long skirt uh, and just grabbing a drink and talking with the bar girl. A guy lifted my skirt up over my head and licked me from front to back. Oh, no. See. that That's in a bar after work, like mm -hmm. at the bar I was working at. And I picked him up by the throat and carried him across the room and threw him against the wall. And I said, why the <laughs> Would you just do that? Do you know what I mean? Like, and he's like, oh, my friend dared me. I said, dared you to sexually assault me? He's like, no, no, that's not sexual assault. And I'm like, well, actually, it is. Guys don't even realize that when they're doing things to uh, women, if you're a sex worker or an adult entertainer, that it, yeah. that it just doesn't even class as sexual assault to them because they we don't feel often entitled. class. Yeah, we, that it, we're not often class as just a general woman because they don't see us like that. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's part of the show. But I, I think that like speaks largely to what Sandy's asking about, like 
Um, exactly. Like, yeah, like driving the exploitation of like women and children, right? Like this idea yeah. that as or we- Desensitizing people. Yeah, like as, yeah. as you um, participate in the production of um, this sort of material, it sends a message to society at large that like the behaviors that you're seeing are acceptable to do not only in the privacy of your own home, but like if you ever meet one of these women who are in there, that is the sort of like behavioral interactions that you can anticipate and it's okay to do that. I mean, like. But that goes down to the fundamentals of teaching children in your own home. Mm. Like we were raised that if you're kind and polite and courteous, good things will come and you always treat people with that same level of respect. So for us, it's not dirty and sure. like this, people should be teaching instead of going, no, don't watch, don't watch porno. You should be teaching and there should be more information about how the world actually really works you know well yeah. and I, I think it goes back to the argument of like okay you know we're going to take all the violence out of tv because kids were desensitizing them and the video yeah. game argument and w what are we doing to all all but of it's people? art imitating life really isn't right. it well, all the time but, you know like i my my kid that's not you know he's going to be nine and he's like, oh, I want to watch this or whatever, you know. And I had to say to him, I said, but listen, when I was a little kid, you know, I was your age. I was watching Lethal Weapon with my mom. We were watching Mannequin. My cousin and I were talking about all these movies that we would never let our kids watch. That just when movies first came out, our parents were just kind of like clueless, right? Like Rocky Horror Show or something? Yeah. No, like all the R-rated like action movies. Well, I had older brothers. They were like, That's I had teenage brothers. So we would watch like, I remember they would like love the Friday the 13th films. Of no, we didn't. We weren't allowed to watch that. But I would watch movies. Oh, like I was terrified. In it. My mother never made a big deal out of a sex scene or look who's talking in the beginning of that. I was born in 83. That was what eighty nine or something, mm. right? So I'm eighty three as well. Eighty three, we're all eighty three. Yeah, that's yeah, up. And Jenny, don't about. we still look so young and sexy? Oh. I mean, so much moisturizer. <laughs> oh, I know. I spend a thousand dollars a year on face cream. <laughs> I'm just gonna plug Estee Lauder. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't been using it, so that's why I got the hat this low to cover up all the wrinkles. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, you know, and that's my mother never made a big deal of it, so it never was. Where See, I was my mom was the opposite. House, she, she was, was kind of her kid's face, like, don't look at that. And I'm like, it's just the thing swimming to the egg. What's the big deal? <laughs> well, I would find that, like, in my household, when there would be like a horror film on, it would be it was quite okay to watch somebody, you know, being thrown from a window or having a knife rammed into their head. But if there was a sex scene, then my mum would be like, I think you should turn that off <laughs> to my brothers. Because they were a lot older than me. Like, my oh. oldest brother's 10 years older than me. So he was a teenager when I was still a little kid. I and he was watching those films. Watching Dallas and Dynasty with my mother as a little kid in, like, the ABC Soap General Hospital, all my children, and, what, like, One Life to Live. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, sex scenes, but my mother hated porn or whatever. And she, the one thing I could, uh, Howard Stern, she hated that son of a bitch with a passion. And th the thing, like, my brothers would hide the porn and stuff. And it's like, when you attack a kid like that, you're going to push him towards it more. That bitch had no idea how to work the computer or AOL when we got that dialogue <laughs> thing. What the hell do you think I was doing at night? And I was in the closet going to a Catholic school up with getting sick packs every night, honey. <laughs> the heck was going? I think I think you touched on something that is like so important, right? It's like accessibility. Like that is really the thing that we are witnessing changing. Yes. It's, well, that's too. Like from when you were doing porn, mm -hmm. that was gonna say, like you know, even with just the way you interacted with people and how the times have changed, or where you were like, well, I don't want to see my friends that seemed invasive. Yeah. Where now it's like. You think about the celebrities that have dropped the, the porn videos, you know, like Paris and Kim, and how yeah. it was blown up. Where now, if that happened, I don't know that it would even be that big of a deal. Nobody cares. Well, and it's so easy to get to, right? Like everybody yeah. has in their hands something that will take them directly to like yeah. a sexually graphic image. Whereas, like yeah. before, to get your hands on a Playboy or a Playgirl, like you had to do work. Like you yeah. had to do fucking oh. work. I remember Hi. penthouse in the toilet at home every day. Uh -huh. 
Totally. One of the main things I remember about Penthouse, they had an article, um, I used to read it in the toilet, about um, these Kiwis that they would just get drunk to the point where they would want to, like the whole point of getting as drunk as they were was to throw up in each other's mouths. Mm -hmm. And this was an article in Penthouse magazine. And apart from looking at all the pretty girls thinking, oh, I'm going to be a model or a stripper (laughs) or a porn star or an actress or something, besides all that, I just thought, how crazy is this? Mm-hmm. Well, do you and remember now you've like, got the internet? <laughs> we're all the same age, so like when Pam Anderson's porn like broke. Oh, it was like rap- at, it was it horrible. Was, I don't was, really remember that. <laughs> we was, didn't really have the internet. Well, no, I do remember it. I remember well, it because it was like a huge there. thing. It's global, right? Yeah, yeah no, I remember time. it was a huge thing, yeah. and it sort and it of like, it started a trend. Tommy's it kicked off a trend. Yeah. I mean, that was like, like, what is that? I like, was in love. <laughs> in love, it started a problem for me for the rest of my life. Well, geez, I must have been watching Rocky Horror Show on VHS and Gypsy yeah. Rose Lee and stuff there, like that. The one that's like, I'm proud to be a stripper was over there playing with her fucking Barbies while the gay kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember, and I remember then, like, you know, then it sort of led to a trend. Like, look how Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian made sort of names for themselves where they were socialites that oh, had a sex tape leaked and that's how they made it worked. themselves. Yeah, it worked for them. And they didn't even have to revisit it again. Like, they mm-hmm. just did it was. Actually, on that note, too, it just reminded me of, like, you know, the persecution that... Do you guys remember China from WWE, WWF, the yeah. wrestler? Uh, maybe. Uh, she was on Dr. Drew as well, wasn't she, Jenny? Yeah. Like, she wasn't on your season, but she yeah. was on the show. Yeah. We China. had our show, I think. Oh, really? You had China? I think so. Or she was French. Because well, she was French, she's, right? she's passed famous. now. She's passed yeah. now, and it's terrible because i watched the persecution like just for me as someone watching it and i would look at videos of just her wrestling and the comments from different men would be like oh go and suck another dick slut and all of this terrible stuff and i'm like but that what did they do that so wrong like what do people feel there's a veil with when you're talking about the internet Mm. Yeah, like power. because but, it's, because it's the internet, it's like it's okay to say whatever you want and not be a nice person. But I think also though the persecution she got was nothing because it was a video with her and a boyfriend that was first leaked. Okay, it was her and X Pac. It was another wrestler. Honest, a lot of it has to do with the way she looks. I mean, if we're going to tell the truth, come on. Like I'm not I'm not trying to be mean, but if she was like one of the gorgeous blonde ones from years earlier. But a lot of it had to do with the way she looked. Mm-hmm. Like, people are just assholes. That's the fact of the matter. If she was a gorgeous, blonde, beautiful, curvy, not manly, deep voice, fucking drug addict, ex fucking wrestler, mm-hmm. you know, like, they, people were just mean to her. I mean, she was. People but they were. But the w, people, the, like, the wrestling industry shunned her because that video was leaked by X Pac, who was the well, guy they, that was in it. And he was time. able to yeah. still wrestle, and she was not allowed to anymore. Like she was, she was the dirty one, and not him. Yeah. And I think that was where Stop the shaming. Yeah, I, I think it started before that. I think there were some issues that started before. That oh, video. definitely, there was more going on behind the scenes because yeah. I know there was problems with like um, with Stephanie marrying her boyfriend, things like that. There was obviously stuff happening. But yeah, controversy sells. It was very, very, very sad. Um, I think it was with the, when we were doing the convention circuit, when we were on Block Talk, when Jake was still on. Yeah. Um, I, I, you chatted to her. Yeah, yeah, when we were doing the convention. You better dig into your archives. I want to listen to it. I know, bitch. I've met so many, <laughs> gotten so many crazy It would be interesting to listen to. Um, you know, I, I, she might have been a Jake show. I can't remember. Um, but, you know, one of the things earlier, Oh my god! It just went out of my damn head. Why does this keep happening? <laughs> hey, Susan, if it's important, it'll be back. No, because it was for <laughs> you. Because I keep. Oh, <laughs> what does? So we were talking earlier about like what kind of happens like for a stripper. What does a bad day on a porn set look like for you? Like, did you have with like a co-star where you were like motherfucker? You, you're gonna ram that thing into me one more time, and I am gonna claw your eyeball out. 
Yeah. I mean, I think the, the good thing about being a porn star and especially one, like I was successful. I had representation. I had um, really well-maintained relationships with the other porn stars. Right. So like, um, all the guys and women that I worked with were all like super respectful and like mindful and would like check in and like make sure everything was okay. And like, there was, there was a lot of like, at least in the shoots that I got sent to there, it was, all, there was a lot of like consent based work that was done like on a regular basis. And like, keep in mind, like, unlike the guy who like totally fucking sexually assaulted Bonnie, right? Like 100% sexual assault. But that sort of stuff happens all the time. Totally, totally. But like yeah. I, we, I saw these guys again, like yeah. we had, this, we had ongoing relationships. And so it was right. like, exactly. it didn't make sense for people to like do things that would be damaging because we would have to work again together. And like, Oftentimes we were represented by the same agent that I was. So like, there's like a, a chain of reporting that was possible where like, I'm not gonna get the fucking cops involved, but like, if, if you fuck me up, like Derek's gonna hear about this and like, he's gonna be pissed because then I'm not gonna be able to work and then he's not gonna get money and he's gonna be pissed, right? So like, there, there was this like, there were like structures and like a hierarchy in place that really like worked to protect me. and. I was also very fortunate because I lived in a structure that like provided me some protection. Like I was successful, I had an agent and I had, I had things that like, like it worked out for me. It's just not the case yeah. with all, all porn stars. Right. Well, actually on that note, should we like James, um, I know Sandy's dropped out of the conversation. Uh, we should show the couple of memes that she had wanted us to share and just see what you girls think about those. What happened to that white dude that was here? I can't even see that. Mitchell. Mitch? Yeah, Mitchell dropped out as well. I don't know what happened there. Okay, so what is this? What's happening? Can you guys can you guys read that yeah, at all? I can vaguely read it. Yeah, I mean so, it's like this is so like more or less it's a contrast between like somebody who, who has to work in sex work opposed to somebody who chooses to and somebody like, you know, due to their the way they're their society is yeah i mean like this is, this is the spectrum of sex work that i was referencing earlier when you said like how do you feel about sex work like it really ranges from like if both of these people are sex workers and like one of these people has the like um agent the option yeah, well, yeah like it has has some choice in it right, right. like you have the privilege to be able to say yes this is this is something i want to go into right and i think right um, you know, it, it is a little bit like gratuitous to have, like it, it's sort of excessive, right? Like, and it's 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 definitely like plays on some like really strong themes of like it is it is young people of color who are being put into these situations, right? Not wrong there, you know. And it is like a lot of like privileged middle class white women who are like able to like benefit from the sex work that. Uh, ends up on fucking videos and like vivid and shit, right? And right. Also, yeah. like this is the spectrum of sex work, right? And and even within the spectrum, even within the women who have privilege, there is still a question of choice. Like if women are doing it because they can't make money any other way, and this is like the best way that they have to make money, like that is also a question of like what are your choices then? Like if this yeah. is, is available to you. So you think yeah, it's still exploitive? Yeah, I mean, to an extent, isn't any sort of like capitalist industry exploitive? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Then yeah, for sure. Okay, so this one says I can sort of read it. My eyes are terrible. Okay, this when fifty percent of sex workers are men and fifty percent are women and 50% of clients are women and 50% are men. Only then I will talk of sex work like it's labor, like it's a labor issue. As long as 90% of sex workers are women and 99% of clients are men, which is what the statistics keep confirming, prostitution won't ever be a labor issue, but an issue of male supremacy doing what it always does against women perpetrating misogyny. I think if you're gonna raise your children to be misogynist assholes, then that, that that's going to happen. Like, you know, I know people who are misogynist assholes. Um, I, my brother's father is one. Um, 
he'll probably kill me for saying that on live TV. But um, hey, we know what it's, is that right? we know that we know that that's. Do we know, know who I mean? you if he does. The truth. Yeah, hurts. whereas I was, we were raised by my sister's father who taught us that if we're all adults and we're all kind and we're all comfortable and we're all, you know, if, if we all have consent, like I just realised the other day that I'm a nudist. Like I didn't even realise that I actually was. I had this light bulb moment. But for me, it's Girl. that if I'm doing anything and there are, if, as long as we're all adults and we're all happy and we're all comfortable, that's okay. Whether I'm walking around my house butt naked talking to my mates while I'm getting ready for work or whether we're on the beach on Keppel, as long as there's no children around and everyone's treating me kindly and I'm treating people kindly that are around me, that, that that's the, is what matters to me and that's how more people should be raising their boys and their women. And, you know, I Bonnie, think- I was saying to you, remember the day, like, um, when we shot the package together and I was just chatting with you and I was like you know I I wasn't surprised or shocked but I remember when we were kids together in primary school like you were just the girl who had come bike riding with us doing everything else like there was just there was nothing there that would have pushed like you didn't come across as a child that wasn't Oh, I, was I, basic, like, I was basically a boy in high school, you, Luke. You were a bit of a tomboy, and that's how I remember you as well. Like, you'd just hang out with everyone, like like you'd hang out with me. I think you and I were sort of in that middle space where we were kind of, you know, yeah, we weren't you were one of the boys. But boy. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Not yet a girl. Uh, <laughs> but we would sort of just hang out with, like, we would mostly hang out with straight guys. And for whatever reason, we were both just accepted into their groups. Well, it's um, probably because us and all the friends we used to hang around probably didn't even have any other friends. So. Well, it's a small town, man. They probably had no choice. Yeah. They thought at least the, these two give us a bit of entertainment. Um, <laughs> but, but you know, uh, the, like there was nothing there, though. Like, you know, a lot of the times they say, like, people who enter sex work and that have this previous traumas as well. Oh, I and, have plenty of traumas. Like, uh, so do I. But, like... There was nothing but obvious. That's not with why you. I. That's not why I work in the sex industry. I work in the adult industry because I have a background in musical theatre and I love to sing and I love to dance. Um, and we didn't really have. I wasn't very good at it, but. And when I found <laughs> alcohol, I worked out that I could practice oh it. My or God. I shake if I shake yeah. my boobs and sing and dance at the yeah. same time. That people found that more entertaining, and then you just get better at it. Oh, God. Mm. Um, I think it is. James as well. I know James is there watching. I had a clip from, because Sunny Lane was going to weigh in on this. So she's a porn star as well. Do you, did you oh. ever meet Sunny Lane? I love Sunny. She's such a yeah. sick But this is Sunny's video that she sent us weighing in oh, on cool. sex work. Sure. If James could show it. This is literally Sunny's contribution. <laughs> love. Her. Oh, she's like, so pretty. She's just like. Sunny's just like no fucks, but she's a great. She didn't oh, say God. a fucking thing. No, no and- she was just like whatever. Like she told me, she's like, yeah, I'll give you a video. I'll give you a video. Then that's what I got. And I was like, Is she, she don't, she don't give a shit. When we talk to her again, send her literally all of my kisses. Send them all. Oh, really? Is she a lovely girl? Because she- I watched her. Okay, Jenny, my favourite sh- – this is horrible now. <laughs> oh, my, my favourite show in 2005 was Jenna's American Sex Star. I was living for that show <laughs> because <laughs> it was American <laughs> Idol for porn stars. Mm-hmm. And that's how I saw Sunny because yeah. she was a contestant on it. And I was like, this show is off the hook. Yeah, and I'm like, I was living with these people. Li- I was living with these two lesbians and they was like, come and watch this show. And they were just appalled with it. They were like, Luke, that's horrible. You shouldn't be watching those four girls. I'm like, it's amazing. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> it's everything someone could want. Like, it's like American Idol dialed up a hundred times. <laughs> like, yeah. It was- Sunny is probably one of the most, like, genuine, kind, and generous young women that I met in my entire career. I got that vibe from her too. Like, you know, she knew how to talk for the camera, but yeah. she was she had this vibe. She was quite authentic. Yeah. She was, um, you know, she's charismatic, but she wasn't fake. 
yeah, she's like so down to earth and like, you just know what you're getting. And like, yeah, she's just like unapologetically who she is and like. Oh, she I, sounds awesome. I wish well, I could like, like make all you girls dinner and have like a little dinner party if you weren't in so far away. <laughs> well, I'd like to find out who her pot dealer is. Oh, I mean, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, isn't it legal over oh, there right now? Is you're, it legal well, where you guys are? Seattle, right? Yeah, there's Washington. A, yeah. It's legal. It's, yeah, Washington. it's legal everywhere. It's fucking everywhere. It's everywhere. And I'm sober, yeah. like super sober. So like Oh wait, you're totally sober now, right? Oh right. yeah. Yeah. And I've like over eight years, like almost eight and a half years sober. Like I'm fucking. I smoke weed. I don't do anything except watch Law and Order and eat Ben and Jerry. Like, I'd ooh. probably just fall asleep. Yeah, it's like, wait. Oh. <laughs> I just but, you know, um, but I just want to do anything in my life. I just want to do something. I don't want to look back. I don't want to get to my deathbed and look back and be like, oh, I had so much Ben and Jerry's. And I saw every episode of fucking SVU, right? Like, just like <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was right. We were talking about that when I was with Luke the, um, last week when we were social distancing, um, taking photos and stuff. Um, I was saying to him, like, I've been stoned for like 20 years, or oh, actually 15 years, but I've been drunk for 20. So now I'm on month four of not drinking alcohol and I haven't smoked weed for mm. years and years too, but do you know what I mean? It's just so different to be sober. Very like, different. Congratulations. Four months is a big oh, deal. Well, I did five months last year and it was the worst five months of my life. I had a headache every day for five okay. months. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, and then I drank for seven months. Yeah, so I'm gonna try it again, see how it goes. You know. Well, then, now instead out. of setting instead of setting a goal for for a certain amount of time, I'm just mm -hmm. trying to look at it now as in I'm a non-drinker now. I don't mm -hmm. even I, I can't even have one. Yeah, because I think that it'll just be a downward spiral, pretty much. Well, I remember Bonnie, you you actually made me laugh because I love how frank you are when you're talking about your bottle of champagne that you use for your shows, like your video shows. Oh, and yeah, you were like about that. Because you were like, you know, Luke, as an alcoholic, like Stop every day I think that. about put. oh, sorry, sorry, girl, um, I think about putting it into the fridge so I can drink it. And she's like, but let's just be honest, Luke, like if I was going to drink it, I'd drink the fucker hot. <laughs> like, yeah, but I'm worried if I did put it in the fridge, that, that, that sort of, that's a step towards actually having a drink. Like, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, I've drank in passion pop you know hot out of it after it's been in the you know hoo-ha and whatnot at parties um i don't really care it's it's this still delicious <laughs> but oh, um but yeah if i put it in the fridge at home i'm gonna drink it so i just went that day that I, you were here i was like no nah, i'm not putting it in the fridge well it's fun yeah. girls i'm in the same boat i i stepped like i i didn't drink for about what five months from the summer had a few uh, right around the holidays and stopped again. But when the quarantine hit, mm -hmm. I ran to the liquor store because I'm like, these kids are going to be homeschooled. I, mm -hmm. If they shut the liquor stores, I got to be prepared. Mm -hmm. And it's been sitting in the cabinet gathering dust. Mm -hmm. I'll do it like a couple times a year. And eventually I know I'll just stop. It's not. It just doesn't work. You, just, you feel like shit. Yeah, you just feel like shit. You do. You do. You, you know? Like, yeah. and I love my red wine or whatever, like Scandal was the death of me. Because yeah, it was I'm a like, nice meal. I would be like watching Scandal, you know, I had the big- Wearing white. When, and I would watch, I have my big glass. I always had like a fishbowl. So I drink wine like by the gallon. I have my popcorn. My, mm -hmm. uh, hi, kids. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. not good. It's not good. Yeah. Oh, well, I just think about all the times I've been drunk and like I just think how did I even survive like I've been to parties where like when I first met my boyfriend I had to get him to drive me to a bucks party because um, my car wasn't working and I can't drive the, the you know gear stick thing um, and he took me to this party I got the out of the car stick. naked and I was so drunk I was just like yay let's go and I fell over so many times I come out I thought I broke my leg um, when I was back at the house after, I was, like, crying to my boyfriend, like, oh, I think I broke my leg. Oh. And I felt like shit for days after. And now I just think I just don't even know how I did it. Even though I love my job, I can still go sober. It doesn't worry me. Yeah. Now, do you two feel that you have body issues? Oh, I'm Me? Oh, <laughs> fuck, every, all the time. Silly. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because people would think because what well, well, you know, you got naked on camera would have sex on camera, sure. that you would have all the confidence in the world. 
Yeah. You know, like people would be like, okay, you do stand up, you, you know, you do this radio show, you get on there, you talk to people, you're funny, you're great in the crowds. And I'm like, dude, I'm the most quiet person in real life. I yeah. don't let people, I'm an introvert. Like I, I, I have super anxiety and I don't like going on stage. I, I have horrible stage fright. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know. I mean, like the, the like body dysmorphia hole that is inside of me is bottomless and I tried to put a lot of stuff in there to fill it up and make it fucking full and no. <laughs> fill it. so I just like look in the mirror and I'm like well I guess that is the body that I'm in and I yep there it oh, is fuck right. off you are way but hot bitch you're still hot <laughs> <laughs> Well, She's see, over it's here like I'm stuck in this body, bitch. My tit is bigger than your whole body. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? well, it's really complicated when you start talking about body issues with women. Like when I was growing up, I mean, you would remember Luke in high school. I was teased for being anorexic and do you know what I mean? Whatever, go eat some food. But I'm also nearly six foot tall. Sorry, I'm half in the screen. You know, nearly six foot tall. So, you know, at 60 kilos, I was being teased for being flat chested. And um, it wasn't until I turned 18 and got drunk and flashed my tits at a pub. The guys were like, yeah, great tits. I was like, I have boobs. I didn't even know because I'd just been told I was flat chested for five years in high school. And then when I quit smoking weed, I put on 30 kilos. And all of a sudden, I have this womanly body instead of being uh, looking like a tomboy and now I just I don't even know what to do with it I'm a bit squishy around the middle not as fit as I'd like but you just for me I don't like doing still photos but at a party as long as you're moving around people aren't looking at your stomach they're looking at your boobs bouncing you know so that's how I get through it yeah I just let go of the idea that it fucking matters like it's not going to look like this in when I'm fucking 80, you know, like, so <laughs> body. like this thing keeps on like living and changing and I keep like existing inside of it. And so like, we'll just keep driving the car and see how long she goes. And, um, I, you know, I, I think like, yeah, I, I, so I'm, uh, a therapist, right. And I work with a ton of women and like, I, I would say less than like 1% of my clients have, have been able to escape like some sort of like body focused dysmorphic issue. Right. And like, mm -hmm. I just, I don't, I don't know that it is realistic. Like I think our minds just sort of like naturally do this thing, especially now with access to like the different ways that body images. Yeah. yeah. Like we just see bodies and we're like, Oh, and then we see our body and we're like, Oh, and then we see that. And then, <laughs> and that and then this and then we're like oh. i'm definitely going through that i used to be someone who i was i was a little bit lucky i was just a, a little bit of a body beautiful and i didn't have to work for it but Listen now in, that that's called being like young now that i've got a i've got a baby like she's three now and i'm just uh, uh, like it just is a it's dad bod's a real thing like it just you happened. know you didn't and i look at old baby. photos of me and i'm like wow i know i didn't carry the baby but she affected me. Yeah. Because because <laughs> I look at old photos of me, I'm like, wow, I look so different. And, like, I look so But we thin. all do. But isn't and that funny that, like, none of us could see the body that we had at the time we had it? Exactly. And I had no idea and how then I looked. what are the chances that, like, right now we're looking at the body that we have and, like, 10 years from our night, we look at the body and we're like, man, what was I freaking out about? The I left <laughs> <laughs> 37, like... Oh, it was a good year, you know? And then you just <laughs> 10 years from now, we'll look back at 10 years from there. Like, there's this, like, yeah, just this disconnect between, like, what my eyeballs see and then what my mind is telling me. is like, mm -hmm. like, this thing is, I call her Brenda. She has fucking, she is off the rails sometimes. And, like, <laughs> Brenda is pretty sure that this is not, like, good enough. And so I'm just like, cool, Brenda. I, I, we had <laughs> photos done. Like I was just about to embark on like a comedy thing before the quarantine went down too. Like we were doing this and the photos done and got them back. And I was like, I'm not fucking using any of these. I don't know who that <laughs> dude is. I, I hate photo like, shoots. I was like, when did I get this fat again? What happened? Yeah. Like, I feel this. the same sometimes. Can't have this. 
I was like, oh no, bitch, it's nothing but cocaine and X lasts till summer. We got to this thing. And, <laughs> I'm like calling my therapist. I'm like, I need emergency sessions. We got to do two therapy sessions a week. I'm like, my marriage failed because I was fat. Now they, I'm like, oh no. no. <laughs> I'm like, I put on all the weight again, bitch. We got to fix me. I'm like, I got to stop. And then my Chinese, ther- my Chinese shrink, you know, the one that does the meds, I go in there. She goes, you have some man I give you pill, make you skinny. Yeah. Doesn't this shit work? Oh, does it work? Send some to me. It says it was something for ADD. It was not controlled. It takes away your appetite. It's beautiful. Ooh, yum. <laughs> but my dad well, was like, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Yeah, just post that shit. Post that shit and move the fuck on with your life. That's what I say. Use the fucking photos, post them, do whatever you need to do, and move on with your fucking oh, life. Oh, I can't. I can't. I can't. You know, I literally, I think, like, I had to pay crazy money to have these photos done. You know, I had a photographer come in. We set up all these different shots. Yes. I won't even look at them. That's I'll give you a hot tip. I've got a tip for you, Jeff. I've got a tip for you. And this is what I tell girls when they're training. Like, I'm trying to train girls to work with me because I want a doubles partner. They're always like, oh, I can't be a stripper. My boobs aren't big enough. Well, I only got little titties and there's no way I could do topless. Mine are plenty big enough. Well, uh, this is what you just got to remember. People don't care what it looks like. They just want to see it, honestly. They <laughs> no, really they just ju- they it. just want to see it. So anything is good. No, no, look, I'm sure homegirl could tell you, like, well, I don't know, girl, did you ever meet a lot of, uh, you know, hang out with the gay gay stars? Me? No, no, no. Uh, uh, Jenny. Oh, she's leaving, girl. She's like, I'm fucking done with y'all yokels. Uh, I want to just say thank you to both the girls today like for coming on speaking so candidly i'm really I, I, I like it's it's a little bit um like you know disappointing that we couldn't have the because i wanted to have like not a debate but you know just a discussion with people who have opposing views but for whatever i know mitch had to drop out he was actually a pro-sex work um and sandy wanted to talk about you know, the oppression kind of stuff. But I think we went over it anyway, and that was the points that she just wanted to make. But I'm sure there'll be a lot of people debating it in the comments later, Luke. <laughs> I'm sure. But I just want to say thank you so much, girls, for coming. Here's Jeff. If you can ask her a question quickly, Jeff, before we go. <laughs> ask me a question. I don't yeah, know what Jeff. the fuck I was saying. You were asking her, did you hang out with, like, the gay porn stars? I was stars like, we came back, and you were just gone. I'm like, Jenna. I had to go pee. I to pee. <laughs> I know. Jenna always gets me, because he'll, like, go to, like, one person or whatever, you know, and I'm like, one of these fucking times, he's going to come back to all of us, and I'm going to be doing something fucked up, and he yeah. always gets me. <laughs> always. <laughs> I'm like, I'm over here, like, looking at my fingernails, like, <laughs> and I'm like, fuck. I'm like, thank God for just taping us. Um, <laughs> The fuck was so yeah, what saying? was your question? You were something about gay gay porn stars or something. Like, did you you asked her? Yeah, she but hang why out with like they saying it. That's, oh, I, it was on some tangent. Did that. she hang out with them or something? Yeah, but why did she hang out with them? Oh, oh we were on some oh, tangent. I don't they're know. They're so vain because they're so oh. vain. Because you were talking about like, oh, just let it hang out. And I'm yeah, like, God, not thank how you. It works like in the gay world and like gay porn, dude. Like you have to. Yeah, like so. Different you, strokes for different no, folks. Gay man. men are more vicious. They're yeah. the most vicious things, I think. You know, you if know you've got a little happens? bit of poot. To gay men is that they get older and they get bigger and they get softer and they get wrinklier. And just like all of us, we just get older, right? And so, like, yeah. this year, you can just be you know who okay i don't know if you've seen toy story 4 or not it's i mean you'll have to oh yeah i, got three I don't have kids yes. so no okay right so yes. so two of you know duke kaboom right oh yeah yes like just be who you are right now like the most brilliant fucking advice from toy story 4 <laughs> <laughs> the body that you have right now and like if this is the body that you die in wouldn't it be nice if you could just like Relax in it a little bit. Oh no! Definitely. I have a thing in my will where they have to cut me up, mm. and I want oh, the cast. God, Jeffrey! Oh. You? Oh my God! I want them to make me thin and like you know pull the face back. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's people that can do that for you before you die. Well, yeah, <laughs> just get, no, get the old face creams going now, Jeff. You'll be right. To, 
look, I slather it on at night. You know what I mean? Like I, earlier, because I was wearing this T-shirt, I was like, James, I'm going to get the saran wrap and tape my tits down. Because <laughs> they were so big in this T-shirt. I'm like, I can't do it. Yeah. Jesus. Look, well, once rough. again, when you're in your 30s and your marriage ends, your businesses go, and then you adopt kids on your own without your husband, honey, and then you find yourself single and you got yeah. man boobs, yeah, it ain't cute, right? Like, I lost a bunch of it, started dating, and there was some nice, but I'm like, I just don't care. I don't really like men right now, so I'm kind of like anti dating, so it's all right, yeah. you know, I don't mind it. Yeah. Like, when it's time for dick again, then it's like I'll lose the weight because I'm like the gay Kirstie Alley, Ricky Lake. <laughs> But you know, you know what, what I saying? think is going to happen? I think that there is somebody in this world who is going to... No, because I won't fuck with fat people either. You know what I mean? So that's the best thing. Well, I know, because you won't fuck with yourself. Right. So I won't fuck with a fat dude. If you start to fuck with yourself, then maybe you'll fuck with some other people who have, like, regular person-sized bodies, too. Well, no, because I don't like... Gotta love yourself one. first before others will love you. Like as for Paul's dead, you gotta love yourself before you can love somebody else. Honey, I want well, to at least you wanna fuck with yourself before you fuck with somebody else. Well, I will. I will get up on that total gym and do me some Chuck Norris hee haw. Okay. <laughs> oh, total gym. I well, want girls, one of those. <laughs> Girls, so, I want so, to thank you both so much for coming on and just talking so candidly with us. Like it was, it was oh, a great. It's discussion. nice to meet you, Jenny. Nice to meet you, Jenny. I, I, I want to take her. I want her to be my secondary therapist. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I make yeah, all my clients do exposure work, so like you would be posting that shit if you were my client. That would be. <laughs> Be, I want to see the these. Show, I want to see these photos. You should show us. You should show us one day. Yeah, little bits of exposure. Show, send them to us, and that'll be a step. And then we're gonna fucking post that shit on social media for you. Yeah. I'm just kidding. We won't, and I won't do that. To <laughs> can I, can I selfishly promote something that I'm doing right now. Oh my. That, okay, so I wrote a. Um, it is a book and. I'm in the middle of doing a pilot study on it. So it's called the phone zone challenge, right? And it's designed to help you have more um, like psychological flexibility with your phone. Who here is on their phone a little bit more than they'd like to be? Oh my God. Okay. So it's a 30 day challenge. There's like morning and evening reflections and there's like change activities that you do throughout the day. And so right now I'm looking for participants who will give me feedback on user experience and like marketability of it. So go to the phonezonechallenge.com or just phonezonechallenge.com. Or if you just want to email me directly, Jenny, J-E-N-N-I-E at seattleanxiety.com. All right, but no, we'll give away a copy today like of, of Jenny's book as well, I'm Jenny, because it's an amazing read. And I really think like, you know, for me, it just, it let me sort of sit back and go, you know, I could identify more things about myself just from reading your experience, Jenny. Okay, guys, if you want to get a copy of I Am Jenny, it's available on Paperbook now, where books are sold. Go over onto our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash my uncensored radio, and you can find out details on how to get a free copy of her book today. Okay, so to be a part of Jenny's new study, you can go to Phone Zone Challenge. Yeah. That's dot com. That's and you Yes, and send her an email or info. Yeah, you can send me an email, or you can uh, you can go to Fuzz on Challenge and get me through there, or you can email me directly at j e n n i e at seattleanxiety dot com. Excellent. Thank you so much, ladies, for being with us today. We really Thanks appreciate for it, me. and Thanks, I had a guys. lot of fun. Thanks, girls. Yeah. All Talk right. to you again soon. Hope, okay. hope to chat again. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha